the best methods f for reaching students, I think, really do depend on a number of different factors. First of all, you know, here, as in many other institutions, we teach in a whole variety of formats. We're teaching very large classes. I have classes with 200 students. And we're teaching small group work, uh, which may be uh, 20 or it may be uh, smaller numbers. And quite clearly, the methods that one uh, are approaching, uh, that one uses uh, very, very much. And also, the bodies of students that we see are very varied. You know, we teach lower level courses where a lot of the people who are taking history courses are not history majors. It may be the first history course they've ever taken. And they may not take another one. And so, both how you reach them and what they need is quite different from the uh, capstone course of the la in, in, in the final year where it's only history majors and they're doing an extended research project. So uh, there definitely isn't a one-size-fits-all uh, for all these different formats. Um, I mean, one of the things that I picked up over the years which was not how we were taught and how we started is an emphasis on active learning, that, uh, that, that mere passive learning and receiving is not a particularly effective way of getting students to reflect on the material. Uh, on the other hand, I'm also a believer that there is a kind of bedrock of knowledge that it's useful for them to have, and whilst uh, they'll only take 10% into the brains of what you say in a lecture, at least you're encouraging them to recognize that there's terrains of knowledge that they'll need if they're going to be able to uh, uh, provide uh, good answers, good thinking on, a, on an area. But active learning, uh, that means uh, breaking up lectures or to get questions, that means um, having a structure of uh, small groups within a, in a large lecture hall so that some of the works carried out in those small groups. It means certain cultivating confidence between a few people who know each other so that when they uh, speak to the larger group they have a, a small crowd uh, behind them. Active learning means in, uh, for example, a small seminar classes, lots of different small writing exercises. I mean, I, when I teach my uh, uh, my uh, a class that I teach on testimonies of the Holocaust, over the semester they do eight or nine different writing exercises. So they're doing reviews, they're doing practice papers, they're doing source exercises, and so on. Lots of different ways to get them to reflect and engage uh, with, the, with the material. 